Oh my goodness, you guys, we are so close to talking about protein moisture balance. But before you understand protein moisture balance, it is very important for you to identify protein and what it does for your hair. It is also important for you to understand that just because you have low porosity hair does not mean your hair does not need protein because protein comes in three sizes. I've broken it all down in this video. So enough jabbering. Let's get into it. So now let us talk about protein. To say that high porosity hair needs protein and low porosity hair does not is an oversimplification and does not hold true. Even if you have low porosity hair, your hair could definitely benefit from some protein and here's why. So protein comes in three sizes. You have small proteins and these proteins actually have the ability to penetrate the hair's cuticle and it improves the moisture content and elasticity. Just by using a small protein, you're going to be able to improve your hair's ability to hold on to that moisture content and it's also going to improve your elasticity. Small proteins can cause the hair to swell up and look bigger and thicker. Ladies, did you hear what I just said? But also remember that overuse of smaller proteins will cause your hair to really get weighed down and it can also help in the loss of curl definition. So in small amounts, Small proteins are really, really good because they go to the core, they swell up the hair. It's all good if used in moderation. Now, what are the ingredients that you need to look out for? Number one, amino acids and peptides. These will agree with most hair types from low to high porosity. And even if you have fine to coarse hair, these will agree with you. Secondly, hydrolyzed silk, keratin and collagen. These are also smaller proteins and all hair can benefit from this, whether you're high or low porosity, whether you have fine or coarse hair. So what do small proteins do? They penetrate the hair cuticle. It helps with moisture retention and also swells up the hair, right? So it makes your hair look nice and thick. Now, what do medium proteins do? Medium proteins will bind with the hair and lubricate the hair strands and it will reduce friction between the hair. Now, obviously, if it's going to do this, then it's going to help your hair not get knotted up and tangled as much, right? And if your hair is not getting tangled or knotted up, then of course, it is not going to break and it's not going to get damaged. So lastly, large proteins. Now, these will not penetrate the hair cuticle, but it will fill up the gaps in the hair cuticle and it will form a film over the hair. And of course, obviously, that is going to help to reduce moisture loss from the hair. But of course, used in the right amount, these can be really awesome for high porosity hair because obviously it is going to prevent rapid moisture loss, right? But overuse of large proteins can be really bad because it can cause the hair to look very stringy and very crisp. Actually, overuse of bigger proteins by any hair type is going to be really bad because imagine you're using a large size protein and it's forming a film over your hair then obviously the protein is not going to allow anything to go in and come out of the hair cuticle. Then obviously this is going to cause you build up and this is going to cause an overload of protein. And especially if you have low porosity hair, this can be really, really bad because anyway, low porosity hair struggles to push moisture into the hair cuticle. Now imagine if you have that bigger protein building up on the surface of your hair and not allowing anything to pass even further. So obviously this would cause more damage than good. So please, ladies and gents, if you have low porosity hair, do not overuse large proteins. Basically, remember that larger proteins cannot go through the tiny gaps of the hair cuticle. Rather, they sit on the surface and fill in the gaps and form a film over the hair. This can be a really good thing for some hair types, but it can be a really bad thing for hair types that have a tendency for buildup. Remember that the film that is formed by large proteins can sometimes last for days or weeks, even if you wash your hair in between. So for example, let's say, hey, I have high porosity hair, my hair needs protein, so I'm gonna use it every wash day. And I'll use the same product, it's balanced, and this is all my hair needs. No, 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 ladies, don't do that, switch it up. Additionally, guys, just a side note, remember that your hair thickness and your porosity will also determine your need for protein. So what are the ingredients that we need to look out for? Number one, gelatin, because gelatin is in between medium and large and it is better for more porous, more damaged, brittle hair or for fine medium hair. Secondly, hydrolyzed wheat, 
oat, quinoa, corn, soy, lupin or lupine, however you pronounce that, and other plant and vegetable proteins tend to have components that are medium to large and may be tolerated best by very porous hair, fine and medium hair, damaged hair, and chemically treated hair. But if you have coarse lower porosity hair, then please do not use these ingredients frequently. I promise you these videos are very very important for you to watch. Okay, I'm gonna leave all of my sources down in the description. Please check it out because please remember that this information is not coming from me. This information is researched. I felt like you needed to have this information in video form because some of you prefer watching. So, some of you are visual learners, some of you are tactile learners, some of you are auditory learners and we can't do anything if you're a tactile learner. But hopefully the audio and visual cues in the video helped you out and you have a better idea now on what to look out for in your ingredients when you're selecting products. Now look guys, I do not own all of the CG friendly products out there in the market, but hopefully this video helped you understand what to look out for and what your hair needs. And hopefully the information that you gain from this video can help you make better choices for you and your hair and your hair's particular need. All right, if you gain value from this video, as always, leave me a like, leave me a comment. Subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.